All right, guys, we're back here at Fur Harvesters, and uh, right now uh, Jim is going to talk about some of the do's and don'ts and some uh, general advice when uh, board Merton because uh, obviously, you know, uh, a high quality pelt is very important in this, and uh, you should make every effort to do the best job you can. So uh, I guess she's all yours, Jim. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, when we when we uh, when we drum the uh, Martin, uh, I pulled out a few samples of uh, <clears throat> you know things that maybe <coughs> excuse me I didn't want to see uh, that trappers are doing because you know generally trappers are, are really doing a terrific job. Uh, they're getting better every year. Every year, you know, the quality is getting better, and, and and you know they're putting together better uh, handle packages. And by doing that, uh, they're going to increase the, uh, you know, the monetary value of, of all their hard work. Now, there's new trappers coming on scene and, and, and some maybe older trappers that don't want to change. But heaven's sakes, if you, if you, you, you got to you, you, you gotta send it into auction the way auction wa uh, wants it. And, and they know how, the, how to get the most uh, uh, dollar value for, for your pelt. So if you're going to continue just, just to ship it in... Uh, the way you know your your forefathers have done uh, maybe it's not the way that uh, it should be done uh, today okay our first example sample here is is a pine marten uh, obviously not a very big pine marten or it doesn't look big because uh, it's been spread too wide and and as a result uh, the trapper got he's not getting any length out of his uh, out of his skin I don't know where I put my uh, tape measure I was going to measure that but uh, anyway here here's a typical here's a typical board put out from fur harvesters and you can see that that this pine, pine marten was put on a board way too wide for the size of the animal and it's, it's, you rob yourself self of any length so the grader is having a has a hard job uh, saying you know heavens what what lot should I put this uh, uh, this animal in so uh, or this pelt in so I'll try to use uh, the correct size board. And now the next uh, sample is, uh, okay, this one. Here's a pine marten that uh, <laughs> you can see what they did to the, the head. I think they, they really chisel out the board trying to get extra length, but uh, that really doesn't work. Uh, try, to, try to get a uniform, uniform size uh, nose on your pine marten. And uh, just much better presentation for the grader and also the buyer that's uh, going to be buying your pelt. Uh, next one. Uh, okay, here's one. Hmm. Here's a pine marten that uh, I hope uh, was I hope it was a roadkill. I hope a trapper wasn't actually out trapping a, a pelt uh, like this because, as you can see, uh, it's got dark leather. It's a, it's got no cushion on it. Uh, it was. Uh, it, it was taken, I guess, a bit too early. So uh, you want to be, uh, yeah, you want to be careful of. Uh, uh, make sure you trap your trap your pine marten in season, and uh, you'll get much better return. Because right now there's really not much value for a pelt like that. So all that uh, we'll take up now. We'll take up again in a minute. Okay, this pine marten here. Uh, not a bad pelt, not a bad pelt, but uh, uh, you know the legs are left out. I mean, much, it'd be much more, uh, much more streamlined if they were left just left inside of the uh, animal. Sa similar to that, they lie a lot flatter. So that might be something to think about if you're uh, trapping. Uh, next one. Oh, here we have an example of a a mouse chew or shrew or. A, flying squirrel or something got at this one really I guess there's uh, not much a trapper could do there but it seems like the longer they're left in the trap without uh, being checked there's more uh, possibility of uh, th that happening so uh, I wouldn't leave my traps out there too long before I you know before you recheck or you could come back and have a pelt that's well at least the back is still good on this pelt so it's worth something uh, what do we have here? Something about everyone. Okay, and this this pine marten. It looks as though the trapper made an, an, an inspection window here, and I I sort of sort of know why he may have done that. Uh, 
there was very likely a, a sign of a taint uh, hair slippage right on the belly so we cut it out and that's that's the proper thing to do because uh, once you see uh, taint on a uh, skin uh, the grater uh, is really hesitant about putting that uh, that skin in a, in a you know in one of the better lots because it, the whole thing could fall apart uh, when the, when it's being dressed so that's a good idea to cut out cut out any taint but if it's up here I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go way up there, but just right down in the belly area. I'm sure that's a great, it's a great thing to do. All right, next one. There's something wrong with all of them. Oh, this one I couldn't figure it out when when the guy brought it in. I was trying to grade it, and my God, I said, "Look, here's the head. Uh, look, but the tail is on the other side. Now, how did this happen? The tail is on the side of, you know, so on the underbelly. So." Obviously, that's just uh, when he boarded this pelt. Um, either he didn't know what he was doing, or in attention to detail, I would call it, because the whole thing got twisted, twisted on the on the board somehow, and that makes it sort of kind of difficult for the grader to uh, uh, to grade it. You know, it's a good pelt and everything, just a little more detail, and yeah, it would have been much better. Uh, here we got a pelt that, oh my god, I don't know, I think it must have been, uh, whew. yeah, I don't know what we can say with that, uh, no value there, I don't know what the problem was, but obviously there's taint, that's uh, that's uh, that's when, uh, you know, the, uh, the weather gets warm and the, the belly contents start to, uh, uh, I guess, you know, spoil and the hair slips, so it's uh, not worth a lot of money. Uh, this pelt, oh, looks looks okay on this side. Oh, yeah, I think I pulled this one. It's a beautiful pelt, actually. The only just cut up in the nose. He was just inattention to detail. I call that. Just just doesn't look, you know. Could have been a little nicer presentation, but beautiful pelt. Okay, a couple more samples. Here we got. Nice big pine marten, nice big pine marten. Oh wow! But look at the look how wide it is. Too wide, way too wide. I measured it, five inches across the butt. Now whoever's putting a marten on a five-inch board, uh, you need to either shave your board down or, or buy new boards, because uh, you know if you got a narrower board, obviously you're going to get more length. So that's just it's just too wide. So that's one one thing to think, think about uh, trappers. Make sure you got the correct board size. Okay, here's another example of another pine marten that obviously must have had taint on it. So the trapper cut out the belly area that was tainted, and yeah, it's good, excellent, great marten too. Wow. Uh, next one. What do we have here? Okay, here's a marten that was an, another pine marten. In attention to detail, I call this again uh, because it's not. You know, this is this is the belly area where the I guess where the penis runs, and uh, it's way off to the side too much. Tail is way over on the side. Uh, when they reboarded this marten, it should have been uh, pinned on the uh, board again. Uh, you know, with the tail right down the middle. So this in attention to detail. And ooh, what do we have here? Let me see. Okay, another another marten that's not wasn't centered. Look. It's not centered properly. It's not fur that great either, but uh, uh, just pull it out of the sample because, you know, uh, attention to detail, I call it. And uh, with a little, uh, little more detail, uh, well, you're not going to put fur on this one, but uh, a little more attention to detail, and they just look better. So I know you got all these trappers got a lot to think about when they're off. Harvesting the marten with the cold weather and the, you know all the other odds that are against them, but uh, you gotta you gotta catch them in the right size trap. Uh, you gotta get them home uh, and out of the trap without damaging the fur. Uh, and then you will you will certainly get better returns for your uh, for your skins because. It's not about it's not about numbers. It's about uh, you know how much do you get for your pelt. So if you really want to break, you you tell your buddy that you average one hundred and fifty dollars as opposed to you know his hundred and twenty, 
and uh, if you if you put the detail in there and you know transport your 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 skins back to camp or back to home base uh, without damage, uh, you'll be a lot better off in the long run. Okay, that's it for now. All right, so guys, there's some uh, do's and don'ts and some general advice to help increase the value of your pelts. And uh, especially now in uh, this first part of the Fur Master series, if you watch all these videos, I'll uh, deal with Martin, and uh, you just follow those videos, and uh, it should help you uh, a lot. Increase the value, and uh, it's better for the trapper, it's better for the, the people at the depots, and it's better for at the auction house and overall product. It's better for everyone. So thank you, Jim, and thanks for watching.